Welcome to the Living Superhuman Fitness Podcast. My name is Andrew Frezza, and I'm joined today by Tony Frezza, Melissa Dixon. And today we're going to be doing Meet the Coaches with Melissa, getting to know her a little bit better, um, hearing her story, talking to her a little bit. So, quick rundown on Mel. She's been coaching with us for about a year and a half. She started last January with us, and uh, she's kind of the jack of all trades on staff. Coaches CrossFit, coaches Beach Fit, coaches our new kids program that we're doing this summer. Um, she's the front desk manager, she's helped out with social media and pretty much uh, any little miscellaneous task from cleaning to coaching to everything in between. So She uh, might she might own the whole thing yeah. <laughs> by the time we're done with this podcast. I mean, at the rate she's going. Yeah, I told her I told her the other day she's like an AI that's gonna work me and Tony just out of our own <laughs> business. <laughs> Try to make you guys obsolete. <laughs> So anyways, tell us a little bit about you, Mel, like just kind of real basic stuff, like where were you born, where were you raised, um, how old are you, if you want to share that, what's your family like, stuff like You'll that. You'll never know my age. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was born in Orlando. I was born on the Naval Training Center there. Um, my mom wasn't in boot camp, <laughs> but that was a boot camp at the time. It's no longer there. Um, so I was born there, and I grew up in Orlando, and then all around Central Florida, I kind of moved around and then started migrating south after I got out of the military and came back to Florida. Um, so I've, I've, it's, it's extensive. I don't know how deep you want me <laughs> no, to get with everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just moved um, south here because my husband is a boat captain and he worked um, out of Palm Beach. So we just got closer and closer and closer to his job. So we ended here and the rest is history. Nice. <laughs> and you have two kids, how old are your kids? Uh, Mason is five and Fisher is three, turning four, and um, they're hooligans. They're crazy people. <laughs> I love them so much. Nice. So tell us, uh, tell us how you found CrossFit. Tell us how you like started CrossFit and fell in love with it. <laughs> we just had this on a social media post that someone put in our community group, but it was literally the menu board out front that said free childcare. <laughs> <laughs> and Fisher was four months old, my second born, and my so that would make Mason like a year and a half or almost two, year, two years old. And I brought him in and Tony was my, my CrossFit guy mm -hmm. who f did my fundamentals. One on one. And um, then I found out I could be here six days a week with childcare. And so every 8 a.m. my kids were in that kid's room and I was working out and I got addicted right away. I think there was a Facebook ad too. And I probably called and no one answered. <laughs> I ended yeah. up just walking in and talking to you. Because you weren't working here yet. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I ended up just walking in and talking to you. And I remember, like, I, I think I saw the Facebook ad and then saw the menu board. And I was like, there's no excuses. They, they'll take my kids. Let's go. So. Do you remember any, like, pivotal moments early on, like, work, either, like, defining workouts or just, like, when it kind of clicked for you or anything like that? I think... Uh, well, like right away in the one-on-ones, I literally like went home and told my husband like, man, this is it. Like, this is it. I want to do this one day. You know, like I can see myself, like I knew I was really far off because I started really heavy. Um, I was post-pregnancy. I had a four-month-old child and um, I had really like let myself go. Being a teacher before pregnancies, just let myself go. And I knew it was far away from it, but I wanted to do, I knew I wanted to be a coach. And... I think like it was like only a couple weeks in. I was literally just a few weeks into taking classes, but I was coming six days a week, so I felt like I had been here forever. <laughs> and I did the open workout, and it was right here on this platform behind us that I did the lunges. It was overhead walking lunges, but I was in front rack because mm -hmm. it was I was just starting <laughs> with an empty barbell and then burpees over the bar and jumping pull-ups for me. I think that was like 15.1 or something or 16.1. Yeah. And yeah, 16. Yeah. And that workout, I was like on a mission. I was like, I felt like I kept up with my scale and I just felt like so good. So that workout, I've always wanted it to be a retested workout so we could, I could like see how much I've improved. But now it's like so far away that clearly I would have improved. <laughs> <laughs> like the next year, I was like, I hope it's that one because that was my one. So I'd say that. And then Murph afterwards was really a cool experience for me too in May. Nice. So what was, your, what was your background growing up? Um, did you play sports? Yeah, I was, um, I always played sports. I, I was uh, Pop Warner cheerleader all throughout my childhood. 
so I've got that <laughs> <laughs> spirit for classes. Um, did cheerleading and my brothers always did football, but I was always like the girl who lifted girls. I was never the little <laughs> tiny girl on top. I was always the one who was the strongest, who was lifting like the 120 pound girl and, um, and could still get girls in the air. So I went from cheerleading into high school cheerleading, high school softball, high school swim team. Um, and then in college I was a rower. So they kind of called me and had me come out to a tryout because we didn't, in Florida, no one knows what rowing is and there's not a lot of high school programs. So uh, the coaches would always like call to recruit anyone who was in high school sports. And I- Or <laughs> was at the I, bottom of the cheerleading pyramid. <laughs> yeah, they called the big girls and send them out. Um, but it was kind of cool because I, I went to tryouts and they were just like instantly like, here's a scholarship, we want you to be here. And so um, they paid my room and board and my food and my tuition. So I got to make money off going to school and being an athlete, and it was really good. Um, so when yeah. we first did our first sessions, I, didn't, I never knew you wanted to coach. That, that like, kind of took me by surprise when you did confess to that. But um, when we did our first sessions, you were so sweet to not like, correct me <laughs> as I'm trying to teach you correct rowing. You did really good. <laughs> you did really good. I was like, wow, she must be really nice to like not like interrupt me and just let me go <laughs> and do my thing. I think it was a technically sound lesson. I would, I would approve. <laughs> did you ever think you, were, you would use rowing again after college? I'm not going to lie. That first session and I saw it there, there's a real love-hate relationship because it's not like CrossFit where you're just going to do a couple calories or a couple hundred meters. To give people the frame of reference, when you're a rower, we warm up with 6,000 meter pieces. Like our race is like 2,000 meters is a sprint race. That's a short race. So like we're rowing 10K repeats. So you're sitting on that for 10,000 meters and then you're resting a couple minutes and sitting on it again for 10,000 meters and your butt goes numb and you hate that machine. <laughs> so when he pulled it out and I saw it, I was like, well, this is gonna go great. Because <laughs> here I am, over 200 pounds, with this really fit guy, going to teach me how to row again. And then there is the dynamic, too, of seeing those numbers on the screen. And I know my old numbers, and I yeah. knew I wasn't anywhere near those. So it, it was a little, like, it was a mental workout for me that day, too, because I was like, I knew where I was failing, and that's hard for me. So, but pushing past that, I could do anything. Yeah, it's a big ego check <laughs> to know what you could do in the past, and then, was, like, it was a humbling You know, day. just get in there and be like, look, I got to put my ego aside and, you know, do, do it. Do the best I can now in my current state. Yeah. That, that moment with you of me seeing my used to could, that's what I call them is the used to could. I had someone in college that was like a, it was like exercise physiology class or something. And uh, he said, you're always going to be haunted by the used to coulds. You're not in high school anymore. You're in college. Your body's changing. And like, I always took that with me of like, at that moment, it was like light bulb. Like, here's my used to coulds. I'm 30 and I'm in here trying to do what I did in college when I was training full time. So it, it makes me a better coach to have that, you know, decline in fitness and come back from it and know what people are going through. Yeah. I remember you said that you, you had gotten in shape first mm -hmm. and that was like your goal to like get in shape first before CrossFit. How, like now that you're a coach and you've been a coach for a year, how does that, how has that view changed and like, to that girl, that mom, that's like, I need to get in shape first. Like, how do you look at it now? And how has that like view progressed? Being the desk manager too and handling like new calls, I, I hear it a lot like, oh, well, you know, like, I don't know if I'm ready yet. I just wanna, you know, give myself a month or two. And I know I was that person. I was, I literally like set a 5k on my training plan before I saw that sign and I was like I'm gonna get in shape so I'm gonna put this as a target and I'm gonna work towards it and I was pushing the jogging stroller up and down the pier and then I was like okay I felt like running was getting under control and I was fit again and and then I was like okay I think I'm fit enough so the first the first training session I had with you I was like Tony don't make me too sore because this Saturday is my 5k like <laughs> I have this savage race that I want to do and it was like a little obstacle course race that I had mm -hmm. gotten fit for and like then felt fit enough to do CrossFit and I wish I had just done CrossFit to get fit for <laughs> that race because it yeah. it would have made me fitter faster than just walking because I didn't push myself I just like you know, the baby would cry and then I would, you know, have to stop. And I would, sometimes I would leave not being sweaty and 
I just, I didn't have my most successful sessions. So I, um, I would definitely tell that person just come in, just come to our beach fit program. If you really don't feel like you're in shape for CrossFit, we can do extra training sessions to get you ready if you really aren't, but chances are you're ready to start right away, you know? Yeah, if you can get past the mental side. Yeah. Hmm. It's hard to be the person who walks through these doors and sees everyone be so fit because CrossFit makes you fit pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Like in like a year, I felt like I was my fittest self already. I felt like it was, I was even more fit than rowing. I was seeing numbers when we were testing a 2K time. I was within seconds of my PR 2K, you know, like it came back quick for me and it does for a lot of people too. So I feel like getting over yourself, getting over your self-esteem barriers is a lot bigger, especially for women who they come in and they see girls taking off their tank tops and they have abs, and, but they don't see what they looked like a year ago. They mm -hmm. don't see what they looked like three years ago. And you know, we had a thread on our community group that was like really surprising of, there was members, I didn't even know their transformation because they were members here before I was, who you see their, their before and after photos and you're like, that's no way. Like that's Photoshop, that's clearly Photoshop. That's not fair, don't play this game. Uh, but everybody has a story like that, you know? Definitely. Can you talk to us a little bit about like what that actual transformation looked like? Like where were you at at your furthest out? And like, when did you feel like, you know, you're, you're sort of at the point you are today um, and I'm sure you still feel like you're improving, but like, and what was like maybe some of the obstacles along the way? Like where were some of those uh, plateaus or things that you had to kind of battle through? <laughs> it's funny you use the word plateau because I think I was actually like the first person to write you a podcast question That's too right. <laughs> about <laughs> plateauing, yes. which coincidentally became my nutrition. So I think first my plateau was definitely like my kids, you know, like I, I let my kids get in the way a lot. I let that excuse get in, in the way a lot of like, I'm a mom. I don't, this isn't about me. This isn't about my, you know, journey. This is about having like, you know, putting them first. That, that's really common, I think, for a lot of moms. And then after, after that, um, it was my nutrition. So, well, when I came in, I took care of the childcare thing. You guys did that for me. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, by the way. Um, but then I started feeling like, you know, I've been here for like a year. I'm pretty much at the same weight. I don't really, you know, I, I'm not getting a six pack. I'm not, you know, doing the work. Um, I feel like I'm doing the physical work and I'm here six days a week. And that missing piece for me was like nutrition. And I started doing, we had a nutrition challenge and I started working with Dom at the time. And I think actually Brendan was my coach. And um, I just started, tracking and when I started tracking and, and eating you know the right kind of foods at the right time that really started improving my physical workouts and my physical energy and I've had like you know I go I wax and wane out of tracking I'm not, I don't like diligently track don't look at my fitness pal because <laughs> <laughs> I'll use it for like one meal and I'm like man I'm good <laughs> but, nailed it <laughs> got it um, you know, I'll check back in with, with what I do. Like I generally eat healthy, but then I start, you know, looking at portions instead of actually measuring them. And I'll like go back into measuring for a week and make sure I'm looking at those portions again. And then they gradually get bigger when I don't measure them mm -hmm. and I'll rein it back in. Um, but I feel like now all the work that I need to do is more aesthetic and more for my energy level. Like if I want to see abs. You know, like, because my body fat percent on the scale is what it should be on, on the in-body. Like, I'm happy with where I'm at. I'm happy with the way I look. So unless I want to see my abs, that's really like, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Can you talk to us a little bit about, like, I know you have a military background, teaching background. Can you talk about how that's, like, impacted you as a coach? Yeah. Um, I like to focus on those two because my job history is pretty schizophrenic. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like my roles here. Um, yeah, so I went into the military right after college because um, I actually, I have a rowing injury and I actually gave up my position at UCF rowing. I gave up my scholarship to do what I thought was right with my body because what I didn't realize at the time is that we were specializing. We were working rowing. This is it. This was our plane. <laughs> and nothing else was supported. So 
I, I forfeited my scholarship there and I decided, you know, I, I had all that money for the scholarship and I didn't want to pay for college, figuring out how to do that. Everyone in my family is military, so I decided to join the Navy. And then getting out of that is what inspired me to go back into fitness, because in the military, I was actually the petty officer in charge of our fitness for my unit, for like 120 people in my command. I did like the PRT is what we call it. So I would measure everybody's waist and take their BMI and make sure they were within regs and um, do the fitness testing, which was just push-ups, sit-ups, and running. We ran a mile okay. and a half. You tested how many push-ups you could do in a time domain and how many sit-ups you could do in a time domain. And were those legit you were, push-ups? No, <laughs> they were like out into 90 was our like, so your, your first push-up lesson with me, I was fighting you, man. I was like, but no. Oh, I remember we had like a, I think a 30 inch box maybe. Oh yeah. We had a pretty was, high box up there and it was still I was against the window and I was not even, I was getting 290 because I had never done that range of motion. I had never trained yeah. that. So for me, it was, it was, it was a deal breaker. I was like, I don't know if I could do these CrossFit push-ups, <laughs> all this tricep in here and everything. I didn't have those muscles. So everybody starts somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I went and, um, I got certification and worked for LA fitness when I got out. So I started teaching group classes and I loved it. I actually love water aerobics. That's a pro like, I love coaching CrossFit, but I also like, I wish we had a pool out back because I would teach the crap out of some water aerobics, man. We should pit, put a pin in that for <laughs> development plans. You start digging um, the pool and we'll be good. I promise you though, it'll, it'll improve your run times. So we can get a pool out back. I can train some people. Um, I, I just, you know, I fell back in love with fitness and I got fit again because the Navy kind of, not to you know, say negative things about the Navy, but I did not take care of myself as well as I needed to. I was based on three things and I was excellent in those things, but that didn't make me fit necessarily. Um, and so went back into fitness and then pursued the rest of my degree, which was in physical education when I started and realized that I loved science and was like tutoring people in science, got into science education and then became a science teacher out of college finishing college. It only took me 10 years to get a bachelor's. It wasn't that bad. Um, and then I taught, um, I taught for my entire certificate until I didn't renew it because I decided um, when we got pregnant with Mason that we were going to um, have me be a stay-at-home mom until the kids were school-aged, mm -hmm. which Mason's going into kindergarten next week, so that didn't work out. I'm <laughs> working full-time, but <laughs> I couldn't stay not working very long. Um, but I stayed home with the kids until Mason was two, maybe, maybe three when I started working here. And then you guys put a hiring post out <laughs> and I knew that first session that I wanted to be a coach and I, I didn't say it. I was embarrassed to say it cause I, I didn't know how it would be received. I'm pretty sure you guys would have rolled, not you wouldn't have cause you're nice people, but most people, if I had come in here. 200 plus pounds and said, I'm going to be a CrossFit coach. <laughs> You're going to hire me one day. <laughs> I don't think you would have believed me as much as I believed in myself. So I knew it was on the horizon. Well, we joked about it, like your crazy progression here, but it is crazy. Like you were in January of 2017, you weren't even here for a year and we gave you athlete of the month, which was like the shortest anyone's ever been here to even get that award. And then a year after that, you're coaching. And now like a year after that, you're just like killing it like in all aspects of, of our gym. So it's like, we joke, but like, you might be owning this gym one day. Like, <laughs> I don't even know. Like, <laughs> you're just like, you got crazy like work ethic. Is that from like the military background and like a collegiate rower and stuff? Or is there other things that play into like your work ethic? I think the military gives me a different perspective on work ethic. Cause there was just the mentality of like, it's black and white, it's the job and you did it or you didn't do it. You know, it's very laid out in that sense. So. For me, it's easy to look at things like that of like, is it clean or not clean? Or is it, you know, finished or not finished? Like there's, there's not a lot of gray area for me in that sense, um, mm -hmm. but it definitely comes from my family. Cause I mean, I was raised uh, with the mindset of like, it doesn't matter whose job it is, you can do it. You know, like, well, it doesn't matter if you're a plumber, you can fix your toilet. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're a gardener, you can, you know, grow these things. It, it, my mom's favorite store is Home Depot. 
I'm not lying. <laughs> She'll be so proud for me to like shout that out on television. <laughs> like, she literally, the best thing I could do is give her a $100 gift card to Home Depot. She'd go crazy. Um, awesome. So I learned that really from her. It, like, you know, mm -hmm. my dad's an auto mechanic and does, you know, he fixes everything and is taking care of everything and, and that side of our life. And, and my mom's literally like taken care of the home and done everything there. So, I mean, they don't even hire people to put siding on their house. They just do it, you know? <laughs> like, I see that with you, like, who built this table? Oh, Tony did, of course he did. Yeah, it's but not I, just I beer pong like tables. <laughs> exterior work and like roofing. <laughs> yeah. I, your parents are like, new roof? Okay, let's do it. I'm pretty Saturday. sure they wouldn't hire someone to do their roof, except for now when they're older. Now they're yeah. like, well, maybe we should sub it out. It's getting unsafe. You know, <laughs> like, is it worth me having, you know, some kind of falling off the roof accident or something, so. Yeah. Um, but they've always done everything. I, I never even realized there was people for things for <laughs> when I was an adult. I'm like, crap, this broke. How do I fix it? You know, like, oh, you can call someone? That's cool. <laughs> so I think it's really from them. Um, yeah. So what is it about, about teaching and coaching that piques your interest? What do you enjoy most about it? I think it's just really gratifying to like show people they can. Because I grew up in a, in a world where, oh, I'll make it emotional. <laughs> I grew up with, you know, knowing that I could because they didn't tell me I couldn't. So I think a lot of people hear that they can't or like they get that sense that they can't and I like showing them they can. That's awesome. Don't ask questions like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just on the sheet, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't let me look at the sheet first. <laughs> That's so cool because you are uh, doing our kids program this summer and you just are amazing with kids. We've seen you do like one-on-ones, two-on-ones with kids before and know you're gonna crush this program. Um, but that's really cool to know that that is your inspiration, you know, to give kids kind of belief in themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, so that they can have confidence, especially through years that are kind of tumultuous and just like, you know, could be very hard for a lot of kids in those yeah. early teenage years and that's cool. It was really cool for being a science teacher because like it was like girls and science like you know girls are always like they there was like a system of of supporting boys in science or like oh it's a boy thing and so like I kind of like pivoted towards like showing girls they were good in science and like making projects of like in middle school age of like how about we just you know make lip balm and like that's science there's cool things about science that appeal to girls too it's not just dissecting frogs and ew yucky stuff you know mm -hmm. and so then coming into crossfit and seeing i could do the same thing for adults now kids which is even better because i you know i was passionate about helping anybody at one point i wanted to be a nurse because i just wanted to help people you know mm -hmm. but this is really like blending all of the things that i love which is you know the fitness side of it and the helping people side and like seeing moms come in with a baby belly and you know a little tiny baby and knowing that girl you, you got this this is going to be fine you know like and watching women like deal with diastasis and things like that it's 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 really cool and it's really nice that it gives me that opportunity to do what makes me feel good. What's, uh, what's some things you enjoy or are passionate about outside of coaching, outside the gym? Playing with my boys. <laughs> really like just doing like family stuff. Um, Scott and I like to take the boys um, to the state park and go riding and um, I like to, I hope I'm going to get him to surf one day. <laughs> Uh, Mason likes to paddle on the board with me, but he's a little scared to get into a wave by himself. But um, yeah, we love to surf. Scott and I love to surf. So having the boys out on the paddle boards or hopefully push them into waves. So um, we yeah. brought up Scott. So let's talk about Scott a little bit. Uh, <laughs> how hard was it to convince Scott to start CrossFit? And what was that like? I know a lot of a lot of people are get, trying to get spouses in. A lot of people have convinced their spouses to get in, but a lot are still trying. So. What was your strategy? <laughs> My strategy. I think Scott would say he told you about CrossFit at this point. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's so funny because uh, for those of you who don't know my husband, my husband has started CrossFit uh, six months. Like he started CrossFit well over a yeah. year ago. He's a boat captain really and he travels. It. And so it was really hard for him to like stay consistent because he would go away for four months at a time and then come home for a month and then 
you know, feel like he was making a little progress and then go to the Bahamas for another couple months and then lose it. And obviously it's the Caribbean and there's rum and, <laughs> you know, like all of the things that you don't want to do when you're fitnessing. Um, so first, he, he was very complimentary of me. Obviously my body changing back to the woman that he was dating before marriage. Um, so he knew it was effective and he, he was very supportive of everything. And, um, I had to stop talking about CrossFit. <laughs> I had to ninja Jedi mind trick him into joining CrossFit because, you know, we used to have bring a friend Saturday and I would always tell him like, Hey, it's that Saturday. Just letting you know, like if I had like said, like, I really want you to come with me. There's always kind of that push pull in, in a relationship. I'm that way. I used to love football. Fun fact. <laughs> I used to love NCAA football until my husband ruined it for me by watching it incessantly. Every team I get, I love having a team and cheering them on, painting my face, being the good cheerleader. But then he was like hours of football at a time. So I was like, fell out of love with football. I'm like, that's his thing. I'll have my thing. So I kind of did the same thing with CrossFit. CrossFit was my thing. He had football. It was mm -hmm. like our thing. Um, and he would tell me like, that's all your friends and I don't want to invade your space. And you know, I don't want to take away. And I'm like, you don't understand. Like, you're just the one thing that's missing. They ask about you every day. They want to know about you. And if you're here, if you're not. And uh, he tried to bring a friend Saturday. Finally happened. And it was tire flips and rope climbs and running. And we have the photo and it's, <laughs> his face looks so miserable. And he was stopping in every 200 meter run. I remember him like, telling me his heart was going to explode. Uh, but then, so dramatic. But then he signed up, you know? So his heart did not explode. There was no medical events. And um, he signed up, but he was really inconsistent at first. So um, he took a new job where he stays home the whole winter. And this last winter, he was finally just fed up. And uh, he's like, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do it. And he started, even though we have a CrossFit membership for him, he started doing like two months of beach fit. He's like, I want to do everything right this way. Cause he would like, he was so inconsistent. He'd come for a couple weeks and then he'd injure himself because he's trying, he's a very big, strong man. Mm -hmm. Off the couch, he can deadlift what most guys can deadlift who work out consistently. He's just built like a ship. And he would do something silly and injure himself. And of course, I, I never tried to coach him. Let that go on record. <laughs> um, but so he's like, I'm going to start with beach fit. And I'm going to start off slow and get my aerobic base down. And he did everything the right way on his own. And then he started tracking his macros on his own. I promise I never encouraged it. I actually stopped tracking when he started tracking because I was like, that's your thing now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's lost a lot of weight and he has abs. And that makes me want to get diligent with tracking again, too. So he's actually inspiring me now. That's cool. Um, we'll go into some, some kind of quick questions, fun questions here. So do you have a favorite food or cheat meal or anything? Ooh, I mean, it's not a cheat meal if you eat it every night, right? <laughs> 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 Ice right. cream is my downfall. <laughs> uh, that's my favorite thing. That's the one thing that I plug it in before I eat my dinner to make sure I can have it. Cause it's like, treat yourself, you What's, know? What ice cream? I have, well, it's kind of boring. Publix frozen yogurt because it fits better. <laughs> I can eat more of it, but I put chocolate chips in it to make it fancy. Um, if I'm going to cheat, it's going to be pizza. It's going to be pizza. <laughs> Do you have a favorite movie or TV show? Mm, I have a favorite movie genre, I guess. Like anything funny, anything quotable afterwards. Those movies you don't like at first, but then there's like a hundred one liners yeah, and you're like, 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 like Anchorman or, you know, like the oldie but goodies, Tropic Thunder. I hated Tropic Thunder the first time I saw it, but right. then I just started quoting it and it's the greatest movie ever. I'll have to watch that again. It's been a while. Heavyweights. <laughs> Heavyweights is one. What's your, what's your favorite CrossFit movement or beachfit movement? Favorite exercise? Ooh. Well, I can't say rowing. <laughs> You can say rowing. I, I do. I fell back in love with rowing. Aww. I really did. So like distance <laughs> rowing is fun for me, mostly because I get to watch other people cry. <laughs> and I'm like, this is short. You guys are fine. And you can beat us. Um, yeah. And that's the, the only thing I have like a slight advantage over. I love the ski erg and I love 
Um, I actually love burpees. I know that's going to take some heat. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite workout, if you have one? Um, I'm going to say Grace. Like if I'm going classic CrossFit or DT, mm-hmm. all barbell, like something all barbell. So nice. that looks kind of like a row. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with pulling from the floor. What can I say? <laughs> Do you have a favorite book? I know we've been diving into a lot of books, like with the coaching team and just in general with book club and stuff like that. Do you have a favorite book? Mm. One doesn't totally stand out. Um, could just be anyone you've liked a lot recently too. I don't know the author, um, but there's a book called Wild at Heart. I think, I think it's Eldridge, might be his last name. Wild at Heart. It's like a Christian book and it's helped me be a boy mom because it's about like men and their journey and their like connection to their fathers. But it's kind of helped me be a mom of boys. So that's kind of cool. Cool. Not, not CrossFit related. <laughs> um, so you brought up the mom thing. How do you, how do you balance all that? I mean, you, you, you have this, obviously you have this work ethic, but like, do you have any strategies for other moms out there of whether it's just getting in their workout or being able to you know, get another job? Like, how do you balance all that? That's a great question. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say definitely like looking at myself in the early days of my CrossFit without working. Um, it was hard for me to dedicate that hour to myself, if I'm being honest. It was hard for me to keep justifying being a stay-at-home mom and spending the money on CrossFit, because that was always a conversation, you know, and... Even with the childcare. Even with the childcare, and it was free. I mean, we only pay a dollar now per per child, which is Mm. nothing. (laughs) I would have gladly paid you more, by the way. (laughs) Um, It was hard for me just to justify taking that hour for myself it was it felt like getting a massage you know like until my husband started seeing he never gave me grief about it but it was something that I I internalized of like I'm not making us any money but I'm spending this amount of money and it feels heavy Um, I I would say like you if you looked at it like that's how much you were getting paid for being a mom is that paycheck enough like because it's gonna pay you more so that, that's kind of how I started looking at it. It was like, at first I was like, oh, I'm not gonna drink any more Starbucks because this'll, you know, like, if I don't take that thing that I was taking for myself, this'll be my thing that I take for myself. And then I started thinking like, well, I don't make a paycheck, but what do I earn? Like, what do I do for our family? And what would that add up to? Like, what would my salary be? And it would be way more than this. So like, if you feel like it's not justified, like start really looking at what you do to earn that hour. And you do a lot. So um, that was hard for me. And then now it's a really good support network <laughs> named Rachel, <laughs> <laughs> who when Scott's gone gets my kids to school in the morning um, so I can coach early. But um, aside from that, just you know, having family support and things like that really help. Yeah, I think it's, it's such a good point you brought up. It's not only is it you have to look at the work you're putting as a mom but you're going to actually do better like if you take that hour to yourself the other 12 hours you are a mom are going to be better hours for your kids yeah so yes you've spent one less hour with them but you're able to give them so much more in those 12 hours because you've done something for yourself i would honestly have like before i did crossfit i would have days where i could look at the clock and it would be one o'clock in the afternoon before i really did something before I got up and did laundry. Like I'd have my morning routine, I'd get coffee, I'd you know, be nursing and like laying on the couch with the boys and watching them play and not really interacting with them and not really having any energy to get up and do something until I was like, oh, Scott's gonna be home in three hours. I'm gonna do some laundry and make the house <laughs> look nice. You know, I really wouldn't be a productive person. And that's like that, that couch to coach that you named my story was like, how did he know? I was on the couch a lot (laughs) because I had like some days I literally wouldn't get off the couch to like one I just wasn't I didn't have the energy because I wasn't doing anything to give myself energy but then when I started CrossFit I was I couldn't do it until eight but that was really good for the nap schedules and everything for the boys but 
I'd be done by nine. And then like 10 to one was like my most productive time. I was crushing the house. And then I'm like, oh, it's clean. And there's still three hours for Scott to get home. Let's go to the playground or let's go somewhere so you don't mess it all up before daddy gets home, you know? Like, yeah. and then I was spending time with the kids, you know? I was doing stuff that, bringing them to the library for story time and like getting them out of the house where before I was kind of in my own four walls only. <laughs> so you're right. Cool. That's all I got. You got any other questions? No, that's it. Awesome. Thanks for making Thanks, a try. Thanks, Mal. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>